We've been exploring this idea of uh, food printing, this idea of a 3D printer that deposits ingredients and it puts these together in sort of very fine patterns and cooks it at the same time with lasers. All of that is controlled by, by software. And once you allow this cooking process to be controlled by software, you realize that, you know, the sky's the limit. You can start really cooking, not just old things. It's not just an, a new way to make old things. It's a way to, to create all kinds of food textures and things we, we couldn't even imagine. So typically we will take a raw ingredient, let's say salmon, and pulverize it so it's a paste. Our cartridges are loaded in, and then a printer uh, basically can move these cartridges around and deposit at uh, high resolution. And when I talk about high resolution, I'm not talking about sort of inkjet resolution, uh, 300 DPI. I'm talking about food resolution, which is a millimeter. We have a cooking code that we use to actually move the laser around. Um, we're using a set of galvo mirrors, which are directing the beam and we can control the angle of these mirrors and the speed at which they move using software. So we're controlling the heat, we're applied to the food, the type of, um, type of laser we're using, so the type of wavelength also affects the cooking parameters, like basically if you want to get browning, or if you want to get more penetrative cooking, and we're doing all of this using software techniques. So we've printed a range of different ingredients. We've printed things like dough, spinach, broccoli, chicken, salmon, Kind of, whole, kind of just runs the gamut. We were experimenting with a lot of new ingredients as well. We we're basically just trying to explore the space because it's relatively uncharted, as you can imagine. The really interesting part of the software, and something that, that we still don't have really in, in a big way, is what we call food CAD. It's sort of the Photoshop of food, in a way. A, a high-level software that allows people that are not programmers, uh, not software developers, to design foods and say, I want to sprinkle some chocolate here and I want to, you know, this pattern inside and this on the outside and I want to, you know, laser broil it here but not there. All, that allows somebody who's not versed in, in programming to control the way the machine works. People look at this and say, you know, why do I need this? Uh, when we present this to VCs, very interesting, the, the, the first reaction we get is, you know, what problem is this solving? The answer is nothing. It's not solving any problem. Food cooking is fine the way it is. But neither did the cell phone solve any problem. Uh, back then, nobody needed a smartphone, nobody needed any kind of thing. But once you have it, you can start making new things that are not possible before. So this is not about doing something we do today faster, cheaper, and better. This is about really sailing west into a new way of making food. And the reason why I'm so passionate about this is because food and software are such a big part of our lives. Uh, and so it sort of makes sense to me that once you take something that's a big part of your life and you transition it from analog to digital, from manual to software control, you don't look back. I'm really excited to see how people will use it when we democratize the ability to cook with software.